Welcome to Trojans Live, presented by Monster Energy on AM 790 KBC and across the USC Trojans media network. I am Jordan Moore alongside Sean Cody, Max Brown, and the associate head coach, Dennis Simmons, joins us now. Coach interview is presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans. Thank you to Coach Simmons uh, for sitting down uh, with us. It's been a few weeks since we talked to you, Coach. Over sort of your your, your reflections, uh, your thoughts on, on on the way the last month went down, and and uh, you know just uh, just not being able to get over the hump in in, in those some of those games. Uh, I mean, uh, as as everybody, it's, you know, it's disappointing. Uh, you know, you had a uh, couple of couple of things that happened in that game or in the various games where breaks didn't go your way. Uh, so you're obviously disappointed about that. But I mean. After you know the Thanksgiving break, you kind of take a, a step back, and then you you kind of reflect on it and, and and look at you know what you have ahead, uh, going ahead, and I, you know I, I'm still <clears throat> a firm believer that our future is still bright here. Coach, you you mentioned a holiday break there. Uh, you get to watch some football. What, what was your off week like? A little recruiting, a little football. What, what, what was going on? A lot of recruiting, a lot of doing what my wife told me to do. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> When you have this, uh, you know, month stretch, and I guess in our case it's more like five weeks of, you know, you're not having a game right in front of you and you have the ball prep and whatnot, what kind of advantage is that for maybe the younger guys on the team and some of the younger receivers to either step up in this stretch? I always viewed it as kind of like a second spring ball almost to get that uh, momentum going in the offseason. How, uh, how does the receiver room pro approach it? Well, I mean, it gives us a chance to take a step back and, and work on some of the, the, the things in our craft that, you don't necessarily get the time to do uh, throughout a regular week because you're not installing new plays or you know focusing on a certain type of defense or anything. So it gets you give you the opportunity to get back to to the basics and, and work on some of your fundamental stuff, which uh, we got a chance to do that today. And then it also gives those guys, you know, your younger guys, uh, you know, may not get as much. Uh, game time. It gives them opportunity to get some extra reps against you know your your ones and your and and get an opportunity to work with the with the ones on offense. You mentioned uh, recruiting. What's your process this time of year? Are you entirely focused on on high school kids and that sort of push towards signing day? Are you are you you know scouting people as as the sort of portal announcements come up? Uh, what does that balance look like this this day and age? It's really all of the above uh, in this day and age. I mean, you're having to constantly recruit the guys that's on your roster because <laughs> you don't want them yeah. to leave then you're re evaluating and trying to sign a class as well as you know trying to you know project and feel uh, pieces of the puzzle with the portal with guys that may may go in and then you know trying to trying to you know get all of it done at once uh, so I mean it, it, it it's, it's it's time consuming uh, the, the biggest thing here is you don't want to just bring a guy into your program to be in your program you you want to make sure you're, you're finding that right person in that right fit so I mean it or there's talented guys that's out there I mean it's 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 a process coach I'm sure uh, you haven't done a full assessment of the season yet you guys got a, a bowl game left uh, and you probably get to break it down all over here but what's what's your kind of take on the, on the years in your group in your room and how they played this year and, and what you expect from them you know there's there's some things that we did extremely well uh, and there's some things that we didn't do uh, as well as we did last year uh, you know obviously you know you start back uh, you know with you know making your presence known and having a, a, a physical a stamp uh, on the perimeter. Uh, at times I thought we did well at that. At times I didn't think uh, we played as well in that area. So we got to shore that up and uh, become more consistent there. Uh, I thought we did some good things with the ball after the catch. Uh, so that was a plus. Uh, you know, I thought we did a pretty decent job on the competitive catch aspect of it. Uh, so that was a plus. Uh, you know, there were some times where, uh, you know, Coming out of the, the top of our breaks and some routes on some comebacks and, uh, and on some curls, I thought we gave the quarterback a little bit of a mixed message. So, you know, there's something, you know, that we got to clean up. A dude I'm really excited about in the future is Deuce Robinson. And uh, obviously played a lot of outside receiver for us this year, came in as a tight end. I'm intrigued to see, you know, we, we all know how, you know, that, that the year one to year two, the jump that dudes can make physically and whatnot and how that's utilized. Um, I guess, how do you see Deuce's future here in terms of his uh, specific position usage? And also, like tight end wise, is it, uh, you're a man of many titles. You have the pass game coordinator as well. Is the vision to have the tight end more involved in the offense moving forward? Or is it uh, status quo with the usage that we have with Lake McCree this year? Oh, I mean, you got Lake there. Uh, and then you got some... Tremendous young talent, uh, uh, Cade, uh, 
comes to mind. I, I mean, you got Tabo. You got some guys in that room that could do it. Uh, Deuce is a receiver, though. Uh, so, I mean, we will continue to use him on the outside uh, uh, as a wide receiver. Uh, that's, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, he has a future for. Uh, now, with that being said, do we expect him to uh, get stronger, get faster? Yeah, and I just think that will make him a better receiver. Uh, a lot of the, the things you, you're talking about looking in the future, a lot of the the steps you would hope he will make uh, from his first year to, to – Next year, some of the same things that you saw uh, in, in in Rice from last year to this year. You're listening to Dennis Simmons on Trojans Live. We're sitting here uh, in, inside a room in Heritage Hall. There's just a little inside baseball. There's a TV in the back, and we always have Monday Night Football on, and Jordan Addison is playing right now, which is uh, – Coach uh, Riley always gets to sit here and watch his quarterbacks uh, in the NFL, <laughs> so you get to sit here and watch your receivers play, which is nice. Uh, you know, Taj Washington, uh, I, I'm curious, you know, to, to, to get him on that TV, uh, you know – what are your conversations like with him all season in, in terms of you know, trying to project him to that next level, things he needs to work on? And, and now that he enters that process, you know, how, how, does, he, uh, how does he get to that, to that point where, he, where he's uh, you know, making one of these rosters and making plays on Mondays? Well, I can tell you this. If Taj just got to get his foot in the door because if Taj gets his foot in the door, whether that be draft, whether that be free agent, however it shakes out, which I think he will get drafted, every NFL GM and organization is going to love him. Because, uh, I mean, he gives – he brings so much added value. I mean, the kid could do everything on special teams. Uh, and it's not just doing it with the ball. I mean, he you saw him be a, a, a gunner on the perimeter going down for punts. Uh, you saw him be a jammer hold up on punt returns. You saw him in the back the back end uh, as an off returner. So, I mean, he gives you so much diversity and, and brings so much value to – you know, your your organization, it'll be hard for them not to want to keep Taj in the building. Coach, you know, uh, announcements have been made with, with Caleb Williams, quarterback, and going to the bowl game, and next year we'll find out. What's that What's that transition like for, for the wide receiver group when they go from one quarterback possibly to another quarterback and getting used to another guy? Uh, it's no different than practice. I mean, when he's not taking the reps, some other guy is. So, I mean, they're catching balls uh, from all of those guys. And it's, you know, that, that's something that they they work throughout the year, throughout the summer, uh, you know, catching balls from not just you know, Caleb, uh, from from Miller, you know, from, from Jake, from uh, Malachi. I mean, that's – if. Whoever's back there, we got a job to do, and we're going to do our job, and we're going to put our best foot forward to make whoever's back there as comfortable and and as as successful as they possibly could be. So I mean, that that's that's never really been see ball catch ball, see yeah. ball catch ball. <laughs> Simple. There you go. Uh, we talked about the transfer portal, and um, we've talked about it many times with Coach Riley, like how quickly that those decisions have to happen and how quickly that window happens. It could be a matter of you know, 24 hours or two days. What is that process like for you when you are evaluating offensive players? Is it tapping into old coaching relationships and vetting guys that way, tapping into high school coaches? Like, what does that look like? Well, it's not just, I mean, identifying a talented player is the easy part. I mean, you got to be able to get into USC. So, I mean, that's, that's a, a huge hur hurdle. I mean, you hear so-and-so, so-and-so entered the portal and everybody gets excited. Well, yeah, that may be great, but, I mean, there's variables and there's factors that, okay, can that kid get into school here? Do you get access to the grades right away? He, well, it's not just the grades, how many credit hours they have. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, having a degree from USC, you have to have so many hours that you've taken as a student here. So if a kid is in the latter part of his college career, I mean – yeah, we may want them, but it may not be an option for us. Complicated business recruiting now. Coach Simmons right in the middle of it for USC in a busy time of year in that regard. There's a bowl game coming up. We just don't know which one. Uh, we'll know this time next week, and uh, we'll talk about that then. Thank you so much, Coach. Hey, we got a big show ahead. Juju Watkins, the talk of women's basketball is coming up. Kobe Johnson, captain for USC men's basketball. Bailey Schumacher of women's golf. we got big stuff coming up. Stay with us. You're listening to Trojans Live.